and welcome to my interview portion of the show, where I get to drive up, meet my friends, and interview them, socially distanced, of course, from their cars, because I want to. Okay, so today I'm here with... Alexandra Mitchell! Hi. Not Alex. How old are you? I am 18 years old. And where do you study? At Memorial University. Ah, very classic, very classic. So, Alex, what is one lesson that quarantine has taught you? Over quarantine, I learned that the materialistic things in life, they don't matter. Being forced to spend so much time with my family has taught me that family time is what matters most, and time is the best thing you can give anybody. Well, Alex, thank you for the time you're giving me today. Oh, anytime. And other than, you know, all that emotional stuff, did you develop any fun new hobbies over quarantine? I did, actually. I did a lot of puzzles. Mm -hmm. I watched all 15 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. I learned how to bake. And I learned a bunch of new card games. Wicked Vi, do you have a favorite thing to bake? Mars Bars Rice Krispie Squares are the best. Can I have some sometime? We'll have to see. They're usually all mine. All right, all right. Well, thank you for joining us today, Alex. It's been a pleasure. All right. Well, I'm currently being chased by Hurricane Teddy, so I have to go. Welcome back to Colorful Thoughts. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Miss Ashley. She's nine years old and a little ball of energy. Playing Would You Rather? That sounds great. Okay, awesome. Would you rather summer all the time or winter? I would rather summer because really? it, would be co it would be too cold, but winter is my favorite. Uh, you know what? That makes sense. Very logical. homemade crepes. For this recipe you're going to need two large eggs, we have fresh ones, um, three quarters of a cup of milk, half a cup of water, three tablespoons of butter, and one cup of flour. So just mix all that together in your bowl and... All right, we now have all of our ingredients mixed together in a bowl. We're now going to place our batter into the refrigerator for one hour. All right, now that it's been one hour, we are going to take a pan and heat the stove top to low medium heat and add in our canola oil. Now that the pan is heated up with oil in it, we are going to add about one to two ounces of batter to the middle of the pan. All right, so take your batter and swirl it around in your pan. After 30 seconds, it's gonna be ready to flip. Once you finish making all your crepes, we can move over to put toppings okay, on Okay, so now we're gonna to put toppings on them. Just take our crepe and put it on the plate and get some, got some yogurt here. Got some strawberries. Blueberries. And some fresh mango. All right. Fold it over and put some powdered sugar on it and then drizzle it with some syrup. Yay! And there you go. Thank you. 
and this is a fun little historical story. Now, do me a quick favor and pretend you're in 1919. January 15th, 1919 to be exact. It's a beautiful day in Boston, Massachusetts, and you're walking down the street when suddenly you see a giant wave barreling towards you of what looks like molasses? That's right, molasses. Purity the Shilling Company had a massive molasses factory in the middle of town, and on this fateful day, one of the tanks of molasses grew a little too hot, and boom! It exploded and then promptly collapsed, sending molasses not only throughout the entire factory, but also on a rampage through town. Because of how thick and dense molasses is, this means it has a great deal of potential energy and thus was moving at roughly 56 kilometers an hour, which is faster than you're legally allowed to drive in some parts of town, with the wave peaking at 25 feet high, which is probably around two and a half times as tall as whatever room you're in right now. It tore through the city with such force, it managed to destroy buildings, sweeping them off their foundations, and even threw some people out into the harbor. When injured victims arrived at the hospital, some of the workers said that they looked like toffee apples. As funny as the story sounds, it actually ended up being a bit of a tragedy, so maybe it's not as funny as I thought. But hey, molasses flood is still a funny thing to think about. Today I'm going to be singing House of the Rising Sun. There is a house in New Orleans They call the Rising Sun And it's been a ruin of many a poor boy And God, I know I'm Mama was a tailor. She sewed a new blue jeans. Oh, father was a gambling man down in New Orleans.
everyone, it is time to take it slow. My name's Samuel Hines, and today I'll be talking to y'all about something very near and dear to my heart. You should be seeing my journey to a completed piece of artwork right now, and I suppose you're wondering who it is that I'm drawing. Well, this is the character Wizard Brown from the Tony Award-winning musical Falsettos by William Finn. Falsettos is the story of an eccentric, dysfunctional, but loving Jewish family in New York at the end of the 1970s. Characters including Jason, the child of the family, nearly old enough to have a bar mitzvah. His family is broken up, despite his father's attempt to keep them all tight-knit. Marvin, the father who has been feeling unfulfilled in his marriage, finally finds his match in Wizard Brown, another man. That's who I'm drawing right now. Uh, he leaves his wife and attempts to seamlessly mix the two parts of his family together, expecting everything to be just fine, but as you can expect, that's not exactly how things happen. His wife, Trina, blames herself for the issues they have, and Marvin encourages her to make an appointment with his psychiatrist, Enter Mendel. Now, the psychiatrist of the f small family falls in love with Trina almost immediately, and it's fair to say the feelings are reciprocated. The balance does need to be restored, and as soon as Trina can allow herself to be happy with Mendel, everything falls apart in Marvin's life. He doesn't have a psychiatrist anymore, nor a lover. His hubris blinds him until he's alone. He realizes that the intelligence he prides himself on throughout the entire musical is more of an illusion than he once thought. In the end, everyone is forced to come together for the greater good, to give Jason the bar mitzvah he so deserves. But without spoiling too much, I can say that Falsettos really hits home regarding the pandemic. Everyone is forced to grow up, not just Jason. This musical has gotten me through some pretty rough patches. In fact, you wouldn't believe how many times I've watched the pro shot since this pandemic hit. It's kind of ridiculous. That's enough about me. Uh, you'll see a few more edits on the screen now, and then this will be done. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. So, the government came out with an article about uh, do's and don'ts for this Halloween, as in our province, we are lucky enough that the kids are able to go trick-or-treating this year, as long as we have low numbers. So, the kids can still go trick-or-treating, but they have to still consider the COVID guidelines. And make sure before you go out to wash your hands for 20 seconds, and then when you come back home, make sure to wash your hands again before you eat your treats. The Arts and Culture Center in Gander is open to the public again. 
So there will be shows for the next couple of weeks and months. So if anyone wants to go see any shows, you can go on their website. Seats are limited due to COVID restrictions, so make sure you go online and get your tickets if you want to go see a show. On September 30th, there was a sonic boom heard over Paris that was caused by a fighter jet flying by and breaking the sound barriers. It caused a shock wave that rattled windows and made birds fly up. And people didn't know what it was, so um, caused people to call the police, as at the time they had no idea what would have caused all this. But it was just a fighter jet. You're such a creative person. I want to know if you consider doing like art when you grow up, or you know what? What would you be if you, when you get older? I want to be a dancer. Oh. And I Very sweet. Any particular reason why? Because For I like, both of them? I like to dance and okay, yeah. um and I like to help. Hey boys, this is our carpool karaoke, but we had to park because the phone kept falling down, so So I'm Alex. And I'm Kira. And we're going to attempt singing Right Limbag. Yes, of course. It's not going to go well because I don't know the end part. <laughs> it's going to be wild. <laughs> Right in the valley, 
Let's take take my feather of property. I get bird bird nest nest on the branch branch tree tree in a hole hold back button in the valley. Hold hold around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in the valley. Oh, back around the back button in